So to really appreciate some of the benefits of NSX, let's draw a simplified topology. And let's start off with a rack that would be in a data center. So this is gonna represent rack number one. And then over here, let's go ahead and put in another rack. And I'm gonna go ahead and name this one rack number nine. And I'm labeling this one rack number nine just to give us an idea that these don't have to be like right next to each other. Now each of the racks is very likely gonna have a couple switches. They're called top of rack switches. So I'll put a couple switches at the top of each one. I'll label it TOR for top of rack switch. We'll call this one switch A and switch B. And over here, the top of rack switches, we've got switch A and switch B. And then those would connect up into a spine layer for a spine leaf architecture. So we'd have some fault tolerance there. So there's one of our switches as part of the spine and it's very likely in a fault tolerant environment, we'd have multiple spines. And if we had multiple spine switches, we'd have additional connections from each of the top of rack switches to the additional spines. So for our drawing, I'll just represent one spine right here. And so the idea also I wanna point out here with the spine leaf architecture is that we are routing. So we're routing between our racks. We don't have one contiguous layer two broadcast domain. We have routed networks. So in each of our racks, let's go ahead and put in an ESXi host. So let's call this one ESXi A. And over here, this will be ESXi B. And each of those ESXi hosts are gonna have their physical connections that go to our top of rack switches. I'll just draw one to each of the switches. Even though an ESXi host is likely to have multiple physical network interface cards, also known as VMNICs. So I'll draw a couple over here as well as a representation of the physical connectivity. And over here, let me go ahead and put VM a, and over here I'll put VM B to represent a virtual machine that's being hosted by those respective ESXi hosts. And here's the magic, hold on to your hats. Instead of connecting these virtual machines to a traditional distributed port group that would allow them to be, for example, on the same VLAN, but instead we are gonna have a new segment, this new layer two segment. And specifically, this will be a layer two NSX segment. And even more specifically, we could call this a layer two NSX overlay segment. So from an administration perspective, it just looks like a port group that's representing that segment and we simply connect the respective PCs to it. So even though these two hosts, ESXi-A and ESXi-B, do not have the same connectivity to the same layer two VLAN, if we implement a layer two NSX overlay segment, again, think of it like a VLAN, because what it really is is a layer two broadcast domain, that segment will show up like a port group on each of our distributed switches. We connect VMA to it, we connect VMB to it, and boom, those two VMs are logically connected to the same layer two broadcast domain. So let me give them some IP addresses here. I'll give this one 10.10.0.10, and we'll give this one the IP address of 10.10.0.11. Now on the back end, we have a little problem to solve, and that is we don't have the same layer two VLAN connectivity from rack one over here all the way over here to rack nine because we have routing at the spine layer between both of those. So how in the world, if VMA tries to communicate with VMB, how is that communication actually possible? And here is the magic. We are gonna create a tunnel between ESXi-A and ESXi-B. So there are the two ends of the tunnel. I'll go ahead and make a nice macaroni shape there to represent the tunnel. I'm even gonna label it. And this tunnel between ESXi-A and ESXi-B that was created by NSX are gonna be terminated at VM kernel adapters on each of the hosts. Over here, perhaps we're using VMK10, and over here we could use VMK10 as well. And in association with these VM kernel adapters, we're also gonna have an IP address for each end of the tunnel. So maybe over here at ESXIA, VMK10 is using 10.11.11.11 with the 24-bit mask. And over here at ESXIB, for its VM kernel 10 adapter, which is acting as the tunnel endpoint on this side, maybe it's using 10.22.22.22. .22 .22. So TEP is an acronym for tunnel endpoint. So think of it like a VM kernel adapter with an IP address representing the end of the tunnel here on ESXi-A and the other end over here at ESXi-B. And I intentionally used different subnets for each of the tunnel endpoints to reinforce the concept that we're routing between the two devices, between the two ends of the tunnel. So although in some topologies we could place both tunnel endpoints in the same exact subnet, I intentionally put these tunnel endpoints in two separate subnets just to reinforce the concept that we're not just bridging the traffic here, we are with our tunnel, we're routing the traffic between two reachable IP addresses. So over here at VMA, if it did a ping to 10.10.0.11, that traffic would be forwarded out the VM into this port group, ESXi would see it, and see that it came in on this layer two NSX overlay segment, 
And I take that entire frame, we're talking about layer two and everything higher than that, that this client was sending, it will encapsulate that and then it will route it through the tunnel over to ESXIB. So if the original message here is in pink, I'll go ahead and put that into the tunnel. It gets encapsulated. So the original content is effectively now the payload and the tunnel traffic will look like it's coming from 10, 11, 11, 11, being routed to 10, 22, 22, 22. And at this end, it would de-encapsulate it and then forward it down to the intended recipient. So from the client's perspective, it just looks and feels like a common layer two broadcast domain that VMA and VMB are in. But behind the scenes, these two ESXi hosts, which are enabled for NSX, have set up tunnel endpoints and they are encapsulating and routing the traffic over that tunnel back and forth on behalf of VMs that are connected to that layer two segment. And you know what? It would only take a couple of moments to demonstrate this in action. And before I take you to the interface, let me reinforce the concept here that my goal isn't to have us memorize all the details on how to configure this. That's coming up in later skills. But my intention right now is just to get a comfort level that that encapsulation is happening by simply connecting these two VMs to an NSX layer two segment. So as a demonstration, here is the vSphere client that we know and love. And here I'm on the networking tab and I'm looking at a distributed switch called DS for NSX. And a few of these segments here, notice that if we click on this, what looks like a port group has a big N there. And what that big N represents is that this is not just a normal distributed port group as part of a distributed switch, but instead this is an NSX segment. And it has a virtual network identifier, uh, this number right there. But the case in point is I just want to point out that these are how they look from the vSphere client. They simply look like port groups. So this is the NSX manager. We'll have lots of time in playing here later. But for now, I just want to go ahead and create a brand new segment. Again, this segment is just going to show up on the distributed switch. It's going to look a lot like a port group. So I'm going to create a new segment by going to segments here and clicking on add segment. And I'll call it fun demo for fundamentals demo. And I'm going to go ahead and associate it with a transport zone called our overlay transport zone. We'll talk about that also here in just a moment. And we'll scroll down and click on save. So all we did here in this tool called NSX manager, we just created this new segment called fun demo. We hop over to the vSphere client. Check it out. There it is. Looks just like a port group. So to demonstrate this segment being used, let me go ahead and deploy a couple of VMs and I'll put them on separate ESXi hosts. So if I go back to my VM and templates view, I've got a folder called templates here. And let me create a new VM or two from this template. So I'll right click on this template. And from the menu, I'll click on new VM from this template. And I'll call this VM on host A. And let me go ahead and let me just put it here for discovered virtual machine. Click on next. And then let me go ahead and place this on ESXIA right there. Click on next. I'll choose the data store. Click on next. And I'll customize to make sure I put it on the right segment. And then we'll go ahead and power it on. Click on next. And I want to put this VM on that new segment we just made, which is this one right here, the fun demo. So that's the NSX overlay network segment that we just made. Again, it just looks like a port group on the distributed switch. So we'll connect it there and click on OK and click on next and finish. All right, one down, one to go. We'll right click on our template again. New VM from this template. We'll call this VM on host B. I'll put it in discovered virtual machines in that folder, click on next. And then I'll go ahead and choose the right host for this, which is going to be ESXIB. Click on next, choose the data store, click on next and customize and power it on. So I want to customize it because I want to place it on that same port group, or in this case, the same NSX segment, which is right here called fun demo. And we'll click on OK and click on next and we'll click on finish. And now both those VMs are powering up. So let's go ahead and let's bring up a console to them. So let me go to VM on host B and launch a web console there. Great, that's booting up. And let's go to VM on host A and open a web console there. And let's also configure IP addresses. So here in the top left-hand corner, it's showing us which VM we're on. This is VM on host A. So let's give it an IP address with sudo ifconfig, ethernet zero. And the address we want on VM A is 10.10.0.10. And we'll put a 24-bit mask on there as well. Then we'll do an ifconfig for ethernet zero just to confirm. All right, that looks great. Let's go over to the VM on host B. So here's the VM on host B. So we'll configure its IP address as 10.10.0.11 with a 24-bit mask. And we'll confirm that with an ifconfig for ethernet zero. And that looks good. So before we do a ping test, let's just go verify real quick that they are both on the same segment. So if we click on network here and then we go down to our distributed switch and click on that fun demo, let's click on VMs. And sure enough, we have both VMs that are on that segment. They're both connected there. 
and the first VM is running on ESXiA, and the second VM is running on ESXiB. So let's verify connectivity with a ping from the VM on host A, which is at 10.10.0.10, 10, and let's ping 10.10.0.11, press enter, and that seems to be working, no problem. But behind the scenes, the ESXi hosts are taking that traffic, tunneling it, and forwarding it to each other. So from an end user's perspective, it looks totally normal. <laughs> like, hey, we're just on the same layer two broadcast domain, but behind the scenes, the two ESXi hosts are tunneling that traffic back and forth. And the visual representation of that is right here. So VMA and VMB, they're both connected to the same layer two overlay segment as part of NSX, the same layer two broadcast domain. And for the traffic, it's actually being sent over the tunnel between ESXiA and ESXiB. And sometimes it's a good idea just to verify that what we think is happening is really happening. So through the magic of some packet captures, let me go ahead and put a packet capture on this. We'll send some traffic over again and then take a close look at capturing the traffic right here as it crosses the network. All right, so in the background, I've got a packet capture running. Let's do that same exact ping again from the VM on host A to the IP address of the VM over on host B. We'll let that go a few times. We'll do a control C to stop it. And let's take a look at that packet capture. All right, and here we go. So let me also explain this part right here. The first four lines here represent the encapsulation and the forwarding of the data from my ESXi host over to my management computer. And that was using GRE. So the actual traffic that was generated and then forwarded from ESXiA or to ESXiB starts right here. So the source address was 10 11 11 11, and that's the tunnel endpoint on ESXiA. And the destination address is 10 22 22 22, which is the tunnel endpoint over on ESXiB. So to forward to those destinations, we used a local layer two address here, a MAC address. And then this second MAC address for the destination is the MAC address of the default gateway that was being used to reach and forward in the direction of 10 22 22 22. So this packet sent from ESXiA to ESXiB had a payload that was UDP. So the UDP payload is destined to the well-known port of 6081 that's being used for the encapsulation used for the tunnel. So ESXi1 shows a high currently unused port and then sent it to the well-known port of 6081. And because ESXiB was listening on port 6081 for UDP, it continued to open up and de-encapsulate. And as ESXiB continued to de-encapsulate, it saw generic network virtualization encapsulation, which the acronym for that is G-E-N-E-V-E, -E -E, or Geneve for generic network virtualization encapsulation. And that's what NSX uses for the encapsulation of the traffic between, in this example, ESXiA and ESXiB. So after the Geneve header, then we have the original payload, the original frame and packet that was sent by VMA that was being sent over to VMB. So we looked at the source MAC address here of 0, 0, 0050, 0, et cetera, et cetera, ending in 2C1A. That is the MAC address associated with VMA. And to confirm that here on VM host A, we can do an IF config, press enter, and here we can verify its MAC address right there. Also, while we're right here looking at the VMs, let's also take a look at the layer two MAC address on the VM that's running on host B. So here is host B, and there's its MAC address right here, ending in 0A1B, and that's what we should have seen inside the trace as the destination in the payload. So let's verify that as well. So if we go back to our packet capture, there's the destination address right there, ending in 0A1B. So the traffic was sourced from 10, 10, 0, 10. That's the VM on host A, going to the IP address of the VM on host B. And again, just as a reminder, everything from this line going up was just the traffic in delivering this packet capture over to my management computer and my management computer is right here at dot 151. And then everything from right here below is all of our traffic related to NSX with the original payload being right here. And the traffic regarding the tunnel is everything from here to here. So I'll label that part as the tunnel. Again, that's the Geneve tunnel. And then the payload of that is the original traffic that was going from the VM on host A going over to the VM on host B. And again, we'll also have more opportunities to both configure and verify this, but I just want to reinforce the concept that it is really happening and it is really that easy once NSX is set up and configured. So one of the benefits is extended layer two broadcast domains. Even when we have ESXi hosts that are not attached to the same common layer two broadcast domains. And again, the way that NSX pulls this off is using the Geneve tunnels and tunneling the traffic from one ESXi host to another. 
Another benefit that NSX brings to the table is security. So for any VMs that are part of our infrastructure where NSX is involved, we have several security features, including what's known as a distributed firewall. And think of a distributed firewall as a firewall that just hovers everywhere. So we can be very granular in what we want to permit or allow or deny between any two VMs, even two VMs that are on the same exact broadcast domain. So if we want to allow SSH or HTTPS or ICMP or anything else, Using the security services, we can control what is or is not allowed between the two VMs. And that also would apply to two VMs that are sitting on the same ESXi host. So over here at ESXiB, if we had VMB and VMC, who's also connected to that same segment, we can also control what's allowed back and forth between those two VMs as well. Another big benefit of NSX is the ability to do layer three routing. And with NSX, instead of having to do that on our physical environment, with our physical routers and switches and doing the routing there, we can do the routing logically in software. So let me give you a quick diagram of what that could look like. Let's imagine we have a router here, this router one, and let's imagine we have router two and router three. And then this guy goes up to the internet. We have some connections here. And then down here, let's imagine we have a few network segments, the 1010 network and the 1020 network and the 1030 network and the 1040 network. Let's go ahead and put some connectivity there. So we'll have this router, router two, connected to those two network segments. And over here are three connected there. So let's put some VMs there on those segments as well. So I'll put one VM there, I'll put him in blue. This guy will be in yellow. And this VM will be in pink. And I'll put this VM here in green. So for the routing, we can do routing east-west. That'd be routing within our infrastructure. We can also do routing for north-south traffic as well. So let's imagine this VM represents customer one. And this yellow represents a VM that's a web server. And the pink represents an app server and the green represents a database server. So for east-west traffic, we can route the traffic between those VMs. And for traffic that needs to go out of our enterprise, out to the internet, for example, we could also implement the north-south routing. And in conjunction with these routers, which in a NSX environment, they refer to them as gateways, we could also implement network services such as network address translation and DHCP and load balancing and VPNs and stateful firewall services and many, many more. And to help reinforce what that might look like inside of an NSX environment, let me give you a sneak peek. So here's an example of what that would look like. We have a router here. We have another router here and here. Then I've got four network segments. So I've got one here that I'm using the 10.10.0 address space on. I've got another layer two broadcast domain here for segment 20, where I'm using the 10.20.0 address space. I've got a third one right here where we're using the 10.30.0 address space. And then I've got another segment over here, another layer two broadcast domain where I'm using the 10.40.0 address space. And the way these segments are represented is they simply show up and look like port groups on our distributed switch. So we simply connect our VMs to the segments, which again, look like port groups that we want them to be a part of. And then the logical routing services inside of NSX are providing the IP addresses and the routing to do the east-west routing, as well as the north-south routing for those clients. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, Head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.